Good afternoon. I hope everything is going well in your life today. I hope that you've had a good weekend and that just uh, life is moving in a, in a positive way for you every day. And I sure hope that our study in the book of Colossians is being one that's encouraging and upbuilding to you. One that makes you want to live closer to God all of the time. We're in Colossians chapter 3. If you got your Bible, if you would, turn with me there. And, and we're beginning in verse number 12 today. Colossians 3 is such a powerful text about really our, our taking on the life of Christ. That when I have been converted to Christ, that I'm to put on this new man and to seek the things that are above and not the things that are on this earth. But look beginning in verse number 12, if you will. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if, if any of you has a grievance against anyone. And I want you, listen to this one, forgive as the Lord forgives you. Wow. And over all those virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So here in, in, the, in talking about this whole concept of, putting on Christ, and now that we're put on Christ in baptism, that we're seeking the things that are above, and we're setting our minds on the things that are above, it's just amazing to me how very simple are the instructions and about very practical aspects of living that godly life that God wants every one of us to live. And, and so if I'm going to be that devout servant of God, if I'm going to be the one that others can see Christ living in me, then here are the things that I need to, to just put on as a very basic part of my life all the time. As one of God's chosen people. Now think about this. All through the Old Testament, you remember those chosen people were the descendants of Abraham physically. It was the nation of Israel. They were God's holy nation, his special people, the ones that were the chosen generation and the royal priesthood of God. But not, not that way anymore. As a matter of fact, Peter would write in 1 Peter chapter 2, and beginning in verse number 9, would say about Christians, about the people of God, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own special people, that you might show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You were once not a people, but now you are the people of God. You at one time had not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. And he talks about us as being the ones that are strangers and pilgrims or foreigners in this world who are to live such a life that others, even though they want to find something to criticize about our life, will come away ashamed that they can't come up with any bad thing to say about us. Now, wouldn't it be neat if, if all of God's people were living in that kind of way, that even when the, the whole world out there is trying to find a way to criticize those that live for God, they're just ashamed themselves well, because they can't come up with anything like that. Well, here are the marks that are necessary to live that kind of life, to have that kind of, of reputation, that kind of, of heart in the world. He said, number one, 
It's vitally important that you, as that one that is God's chosen, that you live a holy life. You're, you're separated from that old way of sin and evil in the world. You live a life that, as God's dearly loved ones, where you are clothed with compassion. Yeah, the idea of compassion Fits the heart of Jesus exactly. One of the most common statements made about Jesus is, and he had compassion on them. He looked out at the people who were lost and and without God, and his heart went out to them. They were like sheep without a shepherd, and, and he would cry out to them, Come unto me, all your labor and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'm gentle and lowly of heart. You'll find rest to your soul. My yoke's easy and my burden is light. So Paul tells us, if I want to follow Jesus, I need that same kind of compassion that rather than looking at the world around me and seeing everything that I can criticize and find fault with, I'm to be that one that puts myself, that walks in their shoes, that feels what they're going through, puts myself in their place and begins to understand what it's like to be in that big situation. So have compassion. Now, that will result in kindness, which kindness, as Paul describes it, is grace being put into action. When I am kind to other people the way way God has been kind to me, it's it's a matter of taking the very grace of God and putting legs on it. it. It's giving it that kind of action. So he said, you be kind to each other and, and show that kind of humility where you're not trying to get yourself into the spotlight. We are not trying to get up in front of everybody and and be the show, but you put yourself back. I love the fact. You remember in in Luke chapter 14 when Jesus was describing those that had come to a feast and he said, don't be like those that are trying to get up to the head table and, and get up at the first place. He said, don't be like that. As sure as you do, somebody's going to come in that's more important than you. And the host is going to have to come and say to you, hey, hey, you, you need to step back down some so that this person that's more important can have that place. Jesus said, don't do like that. Instead, let me tell you what to do, he said. When you go in, take the lowest place. Be the one that takes that lowest spot so when that one that comes in, that is the host, that he'll say to you, hey, move on up here. You're more important than that. Jesus said, take the place of humility. Jesus demonstrated that heart best of anyone when he laid aside his outer garments and began to go around and wash the feet of his disciples the very ones that he was going to tell in in just a little while, you're going to all forsake me. Judas, you're going to betray me. Peter, you're going to deny me three times. All of you will run away. All of you will forsake me. And yet, he bowed to wash their feet and said to us, let me tell you something. I want you to learn to wash one another's feet. I want you out of that kind of heart to be one that bows down to wash the feet of those all around you. That if you see my example, he said, instead of lining up to uh, to wash my feet, I want you to line up to wash each other's feet. And so... Uh, Jesus tells us we need that heart of humility. Paul picks up on the very same point 
and says, you need that humility, gentleness, humility, that submission, that kind of attitude that is tamed and under control and patient. Bear with each other and forgive one another. You know, you can't go far in this life without being hurt by somebody. You know, you think about the one that you tend to love the most in this world, that husband or wife that you've dedicated yourself to over many, many years. It's very easy in that very loving relationship for one to say or do something that hurts the other one. And so even there, I have to learn that huge lesson, forgive. Just, just have that spirit of kindness and compassion that will forgive and let it be. It's not that when you forgive, you totally forget the way God can, but I can forgive and not act on it again, not bring it back up ever again. So he said, I want you to forgive as the Lord forgave you. Well, let me ask you a question. When the Lord forgave you and when he forgave me, did I deserve it? Did you deserve it? Oh, no, no, no. Listen, if any of us get what we deserve before God, we're going to get an eternity in hell. But by the amazing grace of God, he completely forgives our sin and never brings it back up against us again. So he said, I want you to forgive each other the way I've, I've forgiven you. By the way, he's specifically talking about the relationship inside a church and a congregation of the Lord's people and how valuable it is in maintaining that spirit of unity in that local body of, of believers is for us to be able to forgive each other. Now, certainly, things are going to be said at times that hurt our feelings. We're going to get put down. We're going to feel like we're misused. But I'll tell you something. If God can forgive me of all the ways I've messed up, I need to be able to forgive my brothers and sisters in the Lord in exactly the same way. So he said, I, I want you to forgive just as the Lord forgave you. And over all of these virtues, he said, put on love. He said, this, this love is that what bind, uh, that which binds it all together in perfect unity. Now, I love the fact that he's gone down through this and listed all of these marks of a godly life and, and talked about things of, that relate to our being dearly loved and chosen by God. And so we ought to do all of these things out of that spirit of humility and compassion. But when he reaches the end of that discussion at that point. He said, now listen, if you're going to make it, you've got to put on love. That, that just sort of holds it all together. That brings it together and binds it together in, in perfect unity. You ever tried to carry a, a load of, of things that you know, just sort of scattered out in boxes and you, you try to get them all to go up and and carry them, and they in, invariably fall all over the place until you tie them all together. You bind them up together, and then you can carry them with ease. But I bind all of these marks together in love for my God and love for other people. It's amazing how you can carry those things in your life and have that heart that makes us look like Jesus every day. Here is the heart, and this is the way I'm to live, binded together in love. May God bless you as you live for him this week.